<laughs> that's like, it's something that Ben and I have been following and been a part of the hairbrain community for over a decade or more, something like that now. So super exciting to be here. Thanks so much for having us. We're showing you um, what has been delightfully named the Pixie Masterclass by Hairbrain themselves. So thanks for that as well. Um, essentially, this is a class where we're going to show you a bunch of different mixed up shapes on one like pixie haircut, one short and soft haircut. So you could take any one of these techniques, combine them all together in whatever order you want to create a bunch of different shapes. So we're going to be incorporating two different types of uh, one of the sides. One's more graduated, one is more layered. We're going to show you guys how to get that nice popular mullety vibe of the back of the pixie that we're seeing a lot of these kind of concave mullety pixies in the back. And then I'll we'll show you a couple different ways to incorporate in the top. Remember, this whole thing is a haircut, but each one of these panels is also a haircut that you can do whatever you want with and use at any moment to create your own pixie. So, step one of this, we're actually gonna use, I'm gonna be using a folding razor for most of this haircut. Um, you can see this is the one that I use with this sweet wooden handle from Steps, I love it. And uh, we're gonna start from the occipital area down. So if we look at this doll from the side, the idea is, that we want this shape to collapse in through here to get a little full through the top, but then get flatter through here, but keep this kind of like fringy perimeter on it. So what we're gonna do is have our little doll head look down here, check where the ears are so we can get this balanced. And we're gonna separate down the center and then comb to the side, comb to the side. And you can see almost this little base melt that's on there. Someone has done you know, a little melted base on this. It gives us our sectioning almost, right? So what we're gonna do is then separate from the occipital. Make sure it's kind of low occipital. We don't wanna take too much weight out of this through the back. So we get occipital down and then occipital up is your main sectioning for the back. Oh, also we've taken out just a simple horseshoe section from the crown around the parietal area. Very simple, just one and two. Boom, boom. <laughs> Easy peasy. And then we're just separating out the underneath of the back right here and clipping that up in a way. Make sure you clip it directly onto your client's, top of your client's ear. Make sure they're awake and present for every moment of this. And then we're gonna take simple vertical sections. Vertical section, vertical section, vertical section. We're gonna have a traveling guide. So if we were to look at it, the, the shape will be curved. It's gonna curve like this, like you follow the shape of the head, and then you're gonna curve like this. So it gets shorter to longer this way. Easy way of thinking about that. So we'll start off vertical right here. Center back is gonna be your initial guide. This is a, a kind of a big moment. <laughs> because this is gonna be the design line for where the rest of this happens. So if this gets too short at the top, this is gonna end up real short. So we wanna have enough length there to, um, I guess we can maybe bring it this way so you can look at it from the side to start. We wanna have enough length there for this to still kind of bend a little bit. If it gets too short, it might poke out. And we're gonna cut a line like this that goes short to long. So we're bringing this out just like this. I'm gonna naturally just kind of bring my fingers out so I can save that length and then with a long movement of this blade, we're gonna to start to cut this shorter at the top, working down longer, longer, longer through the bottom, saving that nice mullety action there. So right away, you start to see the shape come in. I don't know if you can see it on the camera because I can't see. You can. All right, great. So then we're looking at that curving down. We've got shorter to longer shape. We're gonna be working around now, traveling guide. So what does that mean? We move with the guide. We're not bringing everything to the center. We're using the previous section as a guide for the next section. So we have to move a little bit. In this case, I'm just gonna turn the doll. You can do it with your fingers pointed down or you can do this with your fingers pointed up the whole way. That's the beauty of the razor, right? One of the cool things about it is that you don't have to change your body position as much. I'm gonna slide past my guide and I need to make sure my guide's coming out of that. And then again, I'm working from shorter down to longer. I'm actually sliding my fingers away so I can save that length down here so we get this sweet, awesome mullet action. If you wanted to, you could make that much shorter and it'll give you a very similar shape, but we wanna save that mullet. Save it from itself. <laughs> 
And we're going to keep on going. So I've turned a little bit more. Make sure you don't over direct too much because if you do, you're going to get more of like a bob. And we want this to feel like balance. We're following the shape of the head. Using a little bit of my previous section as a guide for reference. And then we're working from shorter down to longer. See how I'm sliding away? Very, very light, light pressure with the razor. I'm not having to push all that hard. And you can see it just really melts that hair right away. Could you do this with a feather razor too? Totally, you could do it with a feather razor. We can grab one <laughs> right here. And we can do it with a feather razor. Easy peasy. So we got a nice little feather razor happening here. We can do exactly the same thing. The only difference is the feather razor guard is gonna kind of dictate a little bit more of like all oh, the texture that comes off and everything. But when you're working with it vertically this way, it doesn't change all that much. So again, it's like we're coming in and we're working shorter down to longer, shorter down to longer, sliding my fingers right out just like that. I comb it out to make sure that we're not getting too long. This maybe looks a little too heavy. I'm actually gonna come back in. And really, I think the difference there is the, the feather razor tends to save a little bit more of that hair because of the guard, it kind of pushes things away. So you, you're less aggressive with it. And that's one thing that I, I really like about using a folding razor is that the whole blade is exposed so that you know I can be a little bit more direct. It's not saving as much. Now here in the corner, we wanna make sure we keep a little bit of this weight. So if you go around too much, you're gonna take that away. So I'm gonna over direct a teeny bit more in the corner. Maybe not exactly square back, but just out at a 45. And then I'm working that down. Shorter down to longer, just like that. Almost disconnecting that perimeter. So we have that fringy perimeter at the bottom, which is looking at pretty baller. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> what we're gonna do now is go to the other side. I'm gonna keep my fingers pointed up just because I can. It's the beauty of the razor. And it's a free country, okay? You can't tell me what to do. We're gonna pull this out. You see, that's where the guide actually is. Like that's the guide right through there. So I'm gonna start there. And then with a long stroke, so I'm going short to long, short to long, short to long, short to long, short to long. I'm sliding and I'm kind of curling my fingers out and then I'm almost disconnecting the bottom. I wanna save that length at the bottom. You can disconnect it more or less and then I comb it to look like, is it like sitting in, knitting in, just like that? You want it to knit in. You want this to be like, like what you're, like a grandmother on Christmas, just knitting right, right in to this, to this shape. So my grandmother did, I don't know you guys. Now, again, working around the shape of the head, we're not um, using a stationary guide, we're using a traveling guide. So when we're coming out, it's like, this uses that for a guide. This uses that for the guide, right? So it's like you pull this here for the guide, then we'll pull this one there for the guide, and you just keep working around like that to the previous section. Really pretty simple stuff. Vertical section. We pull back to the previous. We pull past the guide so it starts falling out right through there, and then we're working that down, short to long, short to long, short to long. Disconnecting the perimeter. Bring this out. There's the guide, falls away. You can see it fall away. And now I'm working short to long to connect in this corner, or directing a little bit more to make sure that I actually save a good bit of that in the corner. I wanna make sure we don't take too much of it away. We're getting a really kind of a nice concave, K-H-A-N. <laughs> no. Maybe we got a little extra weight there. I'm just coming back in to kind of clean that up if I feel like it looks too heavy in any spot. That's better. You see how that flattens out? It gives us this nice sort of like curvy shape. If you didn't like the fringiness at the bottom, you could take it off and still have that same kind of head hugging shape there at the top. Now, through this side, we're gonna show you guys, let's say that you want this weight to push forward towards the face. So you have all that softness there in the front. I would start in the back, working with a vertical diagonal forward section, working from here to the front, or still over directing to the previous. That way we get a little extra length and push towards the front of the head. Um, so that's what we'll do on this side, and then we'll show you something different on the other side. So we're gonna take this panel down now. Are you using the flat of the blade? Uh, that time I was not really using the flat of the blade, but I'm not, I wasn't really edging either. It's almost like I was using a slight 45 degree angle, so I get that nice kind of soft feeling. I'm not going straight down, and I'm not laying it completely flat. If you're laying it completely flat, which we will do later, you know, you kind of start to 
like peel that hair away like that. You see, it's like, it takes away in more um, like a horizontal kind of vibe, which is a really cool way to decrease weight and, and uh, length at the same time, which we will do more of that in a bit. But it's for now. It's the concave back. That's what they like. Yes. So we're gonna comb this forward. We're taking a vertical diagonal section forward. So almost vertical, slightly diagonal. So we're gonna be pushing forward this way. I'm gonna be working a little bit disconnected. I wanna veil this a teeny bit. Like I want this piece right here to curve over the occipital bone, right? But I wanted this to collapse in. So what the, really, the, in my mind, an easy way to do that is to take this a little bit tighter and then veil over this next one a teeny bit more so we get that nice curve. So I'm gonna pick up the underneath as um, a reference point, but then I'm gonna come past it like that and now I'm gonna be working um, a little bit less short to long, maybe a teeny bit still, but not, not too dramatic. So now we wanna keep this almost square layer right now. Working that out, ooh, she's moving. She's haunted! And we'll comb that out and then we look for the shape. So right now, we can already see that starting to happen even more. We get this curve out, so you get a round curve and then a curve in, which is exactly what we're looking for, that hourglass type shape. Now, diagonal forward, vertical, diagonal forward section, traveling guides, which we move a little bit as we go. You know what, I'm gonna end up like this here, so why don't I rotate this way, and it'll make more sense, you guys can see it a little bit more easily. Smart. I like to put my fingers down when I'm like this high up. We're bringing this out, I'm waiting for my guide to fall away, like there's my guide falling away, and now I'm going to work this in a bit of a square layer almost, but still with a long stroke. We wanna start to disconnect from that underneath piece just a teeny little bit. Coming in to disconnect, just like that. Combing it to check for the shape. I want to see like a curve from here to there and then mulleting out down there at the bottom. I'm gonna continue with these diagonal forward sections. Traveling guide is gonna be really important, why? If we don't travel with this, we use a stationary guide, we start to pull too far and we get increased length towards the front, we're gonna feel like an A-line bob, you know? Which, we don't wanna be that bobbish with this. Here's our guide falling out right there. We wanna feel more like a pixie, so this needs to get, you know, kinda of short. So if those pieces in the front get a little dog earish, you're gonna have a German Shepherd on your hands. Will you, you mention know? if this is a pixie mullet? Again, or what is the goal here? So, um, we're gonna be showing you guys a bunch of different shapes that you can combine together to make like a pixie however you want. So right now we've shown you how to concave out the underneath section from uh, the occipital down to give you that pixie mullet feel. So that way, you know, this is a very popular look at the moment. So it's like you would need to know how to give that nice flatness into this skirty softness. Now, I'm showing you if you wanted your pixie to push forward and give you a, still a head-hugging shape, that is soft and fringy in the front that pushes towards the face. We're working vertical diagonal sections on this side. On this next side, we'll show you how to make it go off the face. And then you can decide whatever techniques you want to combine to create whatever pixie you want to create. And because of the kind of fun block color base melt, we might get some real funky creative color going on. We can talk about that later. If, we, if it even happens. <laughs> so traveling guide, notice that I'm pulling this basically out from where it lives, just using the previous section as a guide, and then I'm working this in a bit of a square way. You can see we've got kind of a flat line there, a little square line. We have short hairs in here and long hairs here, and that's how you know you get the texture that you're looking for. Making sure I connect all of this in. We got just a little bit more from this panel here. And we're gonna keep on traveling. So I'm gonna turn diagonal forward, vertical diagonal forward, because I don't want this to get too heavy. I want it to be a little leaner, a little flatter. So vertical diagonal forward. We're gonna pull this out from where it lives, just getting a bit of that previous section as a reference. And then we're gonna be working that section square down. Just not increasing the length dramatically through the perimeter anymore. You could do that. You could disconnect this right here. Like, ooh, I want some sweet tails on there. <laughs> that could be fun. Like if it was Ira. You know Ira Pope stage? She would be like, let's leave tail here, 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 and here. And it would look <laughs> sweet. <laughs> so 
So you can see, we're starting to get this curve. So it's like, you can imagine it without the, the mullet, what that would look like as well without the mullet, gives you this nice curvy shape over the back or with the mullet. Uh, now um, we can see and tell like what sort of music they listen to a little more or something like that. <laughs> so we're gonna continue with vertical sections. Could you accomplish this with a scissor? Definitely you could. Let's show you with a scissor. We can do all of that. You know who I see using a scissor a lot to do shapes like this? There's a girl named Jude that uh, has, I believe, been on Hairbrain Live before and everything. She's really phenomenal. And she'll do it with a uh, scissor all the time. It's like, we want this to be kind of square out. We could be like this, bring it out. And if you want it to be soft like the razor, we could come in and like cut out the panels like this and give us these little soft kind of fringy bits. But you see how it gives you a kind of a razored feeling, keeps that really nice and soft there. You can see though that from in my mind, it's like this is giving me a similar result with a bit more work. Like it takes me a little longer to get that kind of a feeling when I'm working with a scissor. But you can see it's a very similar look. So you could definitely do it with a scissor. It would work basically the same way. But you're gonna have to work a lot harder, I think, to get a similar look. So what I like to do is, is if I want something really kind of soft and wispy and, and frothy, <laughs> and I will work with the razor straight away because it's just an, an immediate way of doing it. So now we're gonna pull this out again, square out, slight diagonal forward, working that short to long, short to long, short to long. You see, we get a very similar texture to what I did with the scissor, but I mean, it happened in a moment rather than in a bunch of moments. And what is life but, a, but just a series of moments? And we gotta make the best and use them to our, uh, Smartest ability or whatever. You know how they say that? We want to work smarter, not uh, slower. Slower and more difficultly. What kind of scissors were those that you're using, may they ask? Oh, those uh, were fancy scissors. Check it out. Boom. <laughs> this is our brand of scissor right here. Fancy scissors. They're rose gold, six inch, five and a half and seven inch are gonna come out in the summer. We also have a texturizing scissor to match. $160 through Fancy Scissors. You can follow Fancy Scissors if you want to check them out. Just a very simple scissor for a fancy hairdresser. Just like you. Just like you. <laughs> and then um, we start to see the shape really coming together now. See, it's giving us, it's gonna give us this little side birdie piece too. Just by kind of doing that slight diagonal forward, covering their eyes, we're gonna cover their eyes. And then <laughs> you pull this out. There's your guide. Your guide falls away. Can you see that? Yep. And then we're gonna cut like on that same guide. It's, it's connected, but it's just, you don't hold the guide in your fingers like you do with the scissor. And you see by doing that slight diagonal forward and layering this, because of the shape of the hairline, the hairline goes like this. Like you know, someone's hairline goes like that. So if you cut this kind of evenly, then you'll get a mimicked shape of the hairline with uh, the perimeter the layer creates. We bring this out. There's the guy falling away. Long movements of the razor, short to long, short to long, short to long, just like that. If there's any long ones, you just cut them off, knock them right out. But you can see, look at that. I mean, we get, immediately we get this like really nice sort of shape. Bring this out. Now on a doll, you usually have a really thick hairline. The front hairline is crazy thick on a doll. So oftentimes I'll end up bringing it forward and maybe just knocking out a little bit more of that weight there in the front. Just because a doll, you know, just, I don't know why they make the doll so thick there in the front, but they do. But yeah, you see what that gives you? It gives you like a soft kind of um, contour. It's not too, too flat. And then we get this mullet feeling. You could do it without the mullet and get more of just a standard pixie feeling. We could do it with the mullet to get more of like a boho, uh, like alternative kind of vibe. Now, we've shown you how to create a concave shape from the occipital down that you could use either with the fringe or without. Then we're showing you how to connect to have things push forward, but still in a uh, head hugging way. See, it curves and hugs the head and then it pushes forward so you get all this softness uh, through here. Now, what we're gonna have you see next we're gonna switch off, give these poor old hands of mine a rest. <laughs> <laughs> and then 
Ben is gonna show you guys how to create a little bit of more round shape through the side, building the weight, rather than having it push forward, having it push back. So, we'll close this up. That's the nice, safe way to hand someone a razor. And, <laughs> and pass that off to Ben. And then, um, I guess you could use your own if you want, but either way. <laughs> and here we are, we're back. Ben's gonna show us Hello, people. how to connect this in. Yes, yeah, so what we wanna do uh, for this side, you would normally want to do the sides the same, you know, most likely. But for this <laughs> lesson, since it is a master class, we got to get in everything that we can. So we want to show another direction that you could go. This side is pushing all forward. This side is going to be pushing back. So we're going to use a vertical diagonal section going back this way. And remember, guys, if you have any questions for me or Ben, ask those questions and we will pretend to have all the answers. We have some answers. Uh, one of the things that you need to consider on this side, the first section is gonna be the one that makes it. So really we need to make sure that we have, since we've previously cut this side, we have to make sure that we can use that as a visual reference to see how long we need to make this side. Because if you make this one too short, then you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble, mister. <laughs> so I'm going to Lean it forward just a little bit, the same way that Jake just did. I'm gonna use the blade to go this way. I'm gonna try to work this out in a short to long way a little bit so that I save a little bit of that side burning part. And that way we can double check on this side and see if we need to shorten it in, and we do. Someone says, um, would the sides be cut at 45 degrees? Would they be cut? Um, as far as the elevation at 45, I guess it just depends on what shape you wanna make. You wanna make it a lot heavier and build that weight even faster, then sure, you can cut like upwards at 45. We're doing a diagonal back to kind of continue to hug the head, but really thinking about it, pushing back off the face more and not necessarily building up like a big wedge, like firefly type wedge on there. It'll still be pretty collapsed. All right, so we're, we're really cutting this kind of in a square way, really, and that's gonna give us a buildup of weight, but it's gonna the diagonal back sectioning will push the weight away from the face. Exactly. Can the razor be damaging? It can be damaging. Yes, of course. You can use uh, every sharp cutting tool to your detriment. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I like that. <laughs> but yes, you uh, you can if you are using the razor in a, a way like this that is gentle and very very light pressure. This hair has been bleached and everything. It's you know crazy white, whatever. So it's been through a lot, but if you're using a very light touch and gentle pressure and moving the blade in a consistent way, you're not ripping through it, you're just really laying the razor in. Like the weight of the blade is enough to do the cutting since it's a new razor, it's sharp, we change it every time. So you can see that you can just lay this in and keeping the blade sort of parallel with the hair rather than this way. This way we'll scrape it, listen. Oh, that? oh. that is damaging. So if you're scraping it this way, you are going to damage the hair and it's gonna have those little white bits on the ends and that is no good. Yeah. If you'd like to leave the blade a little bit more parallel to the hair and get it moving and then just rotate it slightly, it will begin to cut. And that way it's making clean little cuts every time and that is not damaging. That will just be sliding through the hair in a soft, easy way. So let's take a look at that. Starting to build that weight up. So if we look at it from the front here, you can see that we're starting to get that build. And this side, we're kind of pushing forward in a little bit slightly flatter way. It'll be even more noticeable in just a few more sections. So yes, continuing on, as we move closer to the back, I do like to clip, uh, just comb this away, each section, so that you can keep track of where you are and know exactly what hair you have cut already and you need to cut. So I don't really clip it a lot, but you can keep yourself organized. As long as the hair is wet, it'll, it'll stay up there. So each time I'm gonna move this right out from where it is, lay it out, and we're cutting in that square way. So we're short to long, short to long, short to long, short to long, and moving right through this section. And you will see that when we hold this out, it kind of still has a square feeling once we have cut it all. There we go, square feeling. But then when you comb that out, it, it's giving you that round weight and then it hugs right in at the bottom. Beautiful. We have a few more people asking about uh, the razor and split heads and damage. You guys, something to remember, just like Ben was saying, is that a razor 
can totally cause damage in the hair, but so can a scissor, so can a clipper. Um, yes, we are using a traveling guide for the uh, gallant beauty who just asked. But so can anyway, fire. Yeah, and, fire. Um, and you know, blow torches. Can also cause axes. damage. Axes, machetes, and samurai swords, which I've seen all of these cut hair on the internet. But the beautiful thing about a razor, you guys, is that if you know how to use it, it can be a really awesome tool for creating a lot of different interesting textures and movements and feelings without damaging the hair. Steps that we take to not damage the hair would be to make sure you're using a new razor, make sure you're using light pressure, the right angle of the razor to the section, and the hair is damp enough for the razor to work without causing that damage. So it just takes a little bit of practice. You can definitely you know, cause damage, but if you know how to use it, it can be a beautiful tool to use. And it is really about a very light touch, light, consistent movements of the blade. That's what keeps the hair safe and healthy and happy. Safe, That's healthy, it. happy hair. That's what we're looking for, guys. A very <laughs> Bob Ross approach. We, as we continue through, the diagonal back sectioning is pushing this weight away from the face to keep, keep the face more open, but it builds this weight and then it hugs in right on the underneath. Very nice. And then flips out because we have this crazy mullet. Yeah. And you could have the mullet or not, like we said. So but I think it's just nice to, to know the option of the mullet when you want to cut it. Because right now, we get asked for it a good bit. I think it's cool to have the fringiness at the bottom. Like Ben has it sort of going on I have on it. his own head. You get it uh, for free if you just don't get a haircut in a while. It happens automatically. <laughs> that's, that's my method. We are using a traveling guide still. Yeah, each one is pulled just to the previous guide and then cut in a square way through the back with a long movement of the, of the razor so that it does remove a lot of weight through each section as we're cutting. And we're just continuing traveling. I'm moving myself with each section. So you can see like where he is in relation to it is now standing in the back. Where he was before was standing over here in the front. So he's wa worked his body around so that the guide is consistent as he goes. It is traveling. It's safe to travel now. The air, airports have opened. Most countries are open now. You can go anywhere you want, mostly. Someone asks, can you make the like fringy part of the mullet thicker? Like, it, are, is that a possibility? Obviously not after we've already cut it, but if we were going to make it thicker, how would we go about doing that? Make it thicker? Like if we, then if you wanted more here, I guess. Oh, you would just not have con. You you when we were cutting this front section, it was kind of getting really tight through here, and then just kind of disconnected the bottom to leave the skinny tails. You could just do that higher up. You don't need to. Yeah, you just take less out of that concave area. If you just held it at a total square here, you just wouldn't have removed all of this. But then that would be making this part a lot thicker. So it'd be like more clunky, sort of like myself. But if you like it to kind of hug in like yeah, this, the, then you need to remove that weight through there. We wanted that to, to really like tighten up, hug in the back of the head so you get that kind of curviness, you know? But you could definitely just leave more length there. No biggie. But yeah, so what, what we want to do to double check this, there's not, as real, not really a lot of cross-checking that we're doing when we're cutting with the razor, but you, the, the cross-checking is kind of visual. So you want to just comb this backwards and see if there's any clunkiness anywhere. Comb it forward. You just want to be able to see it move and interact with each other and all be, you know, just blurry. You know, you don't want to see any, any chunks anywhere. And even though this color is sort of crazy, now <laughs> it, you can see that it does kind of blend together in any direction. And just for anyone who's just tuning on, we're showing you different techniques in each panel to create a haircut of your own. So we have first showed, oh, there's a truck going by. Here, you go, you go on oh, sure. and give us a talk. Okay. So yeah, anyone who's just tuning in, just to review what we've done so far. We took from the occipital down, vertical sections, and cut short to long like this, concave, which gives you a flatter feeling in the back with this fringier um, perimeter on it. You can see that gives us a really nice, even, like fringy perimeter. And then we're showing you different shapes that you can make. So let's say that you want your pixie to push forward towards the face and be soft in the front. You can start in the back with a vertical diagonal section, which is what we did on this side. And this will naturally have that feeling of moving forward. You can see that it just very easily wants to push forward. Or if you wanted your pixie to push back off the face, 
you could come to the front with a vertical diagonal back instead of forward, work from the front to the back, and you get this push back off the face like that. So one is sort of building in this way, and one is sort of collapsing forward in this way. So whichever one you prefer, you can mix and match. You can do the same thing on each side. You can do exactly this and get a slightly kind of asymmetrical, asymmetrical uh, distribution of weight there. I'm just gonna go ahead and bust out Ben's razor. Now we're gonna show you um, two different ways to do the top. A way to like connect in the crown and the sides and then a way to change the fringe. I think we could even work a little curtain fringe right now. Curtain fringe. Which is, um, this will be more of like a, um, what's it called when you have short curtains? I don't know. Like a, like a, a duvet? Well that's on the bed. Um, oh, Ira has come on and said hello. Hey Ira, we were just talking about you earlier. <laughs> We were talking about having some tails and stuff, and I, I say that Ira would have some tails on here. <laughs> so now what we're gonna do, you guys, we've, we've shown three techniques on the side. Uh, diagonal backs, diagonal forward, and then concave vertical sections. So you can use those, you can mix and match those. Now what we're gonna do is drop down the top. Literally, you could be like, oh, I'm done. This is the pixie. You could leave <laughs> some tails. Speaking of another tail, there's one right there. You could raccoon stamp that thing out if you want. <laughs> But what we're gonna do is connect things in a little bit, bit, a little bit more. So from here, we're gonna take a crown section. So just literally come across that, separate out, like really thinking about like what's gonna sit in the back of the head naturally and what will sit in the front, you know? So I don't think anything more than that, unless you're forcing it to the back, is gonna go there. Thinking maybe slight apex area to the crown. We're just pushing that to the back. Now, we wanna connect that in. So let's clip the rest of this up so we're just mentally focused on just the back for now. From there, we're going to subdivide this out again down the center, just like this. And then take horizontal sections, dividing it again. You can clip this up if you want. I think it's totally fine just to kind of have it fall out like that. Then we're gonna pull this out. We're using this crown as a guide. You see this? This is our guide right in here at the crown. Now we're gonna use the flat of the razor completely down at about 45 degrees. Maybe not too, you don't wanna get too low because if you get too low, it's gonna be too shelf-like. We gotta almost pull it a little higher, but maybe slight 45. You can always take some out. Where instead of working like this, like we have been, we're gonna lay this down flat on there and just sort of lean this in a teeny bit. And with very, very light pressure, we're going to start to skim this weight and length right off. Only working with what I can hold comfortably and have good tension on in my fingers. We're skimming, we're skimming, we're skimming. And then you can see that will like very nicely like melt that in to what's underneath. So you get this kind of visual connection, that nice little kind of blurry visual connection there. And this doll, it had a base melt on it which I think it's gonna just be interesting. We'll get some creative, <laughs> some creative color on it. So again, now we're gonna keep on connecting. This is a stationary guide. For the first time of this haircut, we've got a stationary guide pulling this out. I'm looking for where is my guide. It's basically right below there. And we're going to skim. So we're removing weight and length at the same time. Short to long, short to long, short to long. Light pressure right off the top. Kind of cutting this square back right now. So you're gonna get a little increased length here in the corner, which is okay. Now we're combing that out. You can see it gives a really nice seamless blend into the top. It gives you this really kind of soft, um, you know, wispy, airy kind of feeling. That's what we want. And then we're just gonna keep on bringing that down, connecting it in. So we'll pull this out. Let's see it from this direction. Another way that you could do it, like you could kind of tip through it like this if you wanted it first. Like work through it to lighten it up some. If you wanted to like be like, oh, let's have some big sections come out for more texture and then come and plane it through, you know? Which I think on a person at the very top section, I don't often do that, um, but on a doll, because this, again, like right here, all the hair is sewn in so thick. So we can take a little more out there. So now I'm just checking for that movement. Is it blending in nicely? I mean, I think we're getting a really nice kind of feeling there. You can see you get that increased length here in the corner. So we've got our concave mullet feeling, and now we've got this increased length through here in the corner that can, we can work into the sides or take off. We'll do the same thing over here. Horizontal. You could do side to side if you want. 
Or you could just resection and grab a little piece. Like it doesn't really matter. It doesn't. <laughs> you can do whatever one you want. Bring that out. Here's my guide. Slide slightly past it. Then I'm going to lean this razor in a teeny bit, short to long, short to long. We're skimming off the top. So we're taking weight away uh, until it gets all the way through, which then it takes a length away. Then we check for our guide. Still looking good. We're going to be pulling square back. I don't want to work all the way around this because I don't want to take the corner off. Keep that in mind when you're doing it. I'm intentionally keeping extra length here in the corner. So by doing that, I'm just pulling back. Rather than working around, I'm just gonna pull it right back. We're bringing this to a kind of a light 45, shallow 45. <laughs> it's about a... Um, 38. Yeah, maybe something like that. And then we're just taking this out, taking this out. Again, skimming off the top, removing the length and the weight at exactly the same time. Something that is difficult to do with the scissor. Not impossible, but difficult to do with the scissor. Now we'll bring all of this together. Just like that. Making sure I have good, clean tension. I want good, even, clean tension using the fine teeth. There's my guide right over there. You can see it falling out of my hands. And then we're going to skim that away, skim that away. So we're removing length and weight all at the same time until we've connected those two. Now, again, uh, you can even tip through after the fact if you'd like. Sometimes this crown just gets so heavy, so I just like to do a little tipping through the crown here on a doll that you may or may not do on a person. Keep that in mind. It really just depends on the density of the area in which you are working. So we got increased length here. I can check for my balance. <laughs> That's looking pretty good. We can see, like, are we getting that kind of like curvy, mullety mm -hmm. vibe? Actually, the color is starting to look cool. I think it's like starting to work in. Um, you know, the color was not part of this. I think, honestly, I think that maybe I'm a little too heavy right there. So we're going to grab a spray bottle, which I left over here, of course. It's my Halloween spray bottle. It's a scary ghost Ooh, skull. Lair. You only use this one for a ghost lair. And you take this out, <laughs> get a little spritz. Ooh, would this work on curly hair? Uh, yeah, it would, but what you'd have to consider is the uh, like recoil <laughs> of the curl might shrink up a lot, you know, depending on the, the formation of the curl. So you have to think about that, and maybe oftentimes I maybe don't make things as skinny on the ends with curly hair because I don't want it to get too frizzy or wispy. Uh, but, you know, definitely could work for sure. I think this looks a little heavy from what I did underneath, so I'm just going to take that in a teeny bit there. You're right. What's the best way to reduce weight in the hair with the razor? There's so many good ways to reduce weight with the hair with the razor. That's a great question that you ask. Who asked that question? That was, of course, D. Senga D. hair. Senga, always coming through with all of the best questions. Always. So, always. So I'll show you a few different ways to do that. It, this is not part of the haircut now. This is just um, an example moment. For D. So there's a few different ways we can take weight out with a razor. One way is tipping, where we can lift to just the tip of the razor and then very lightly work through like this. You can see it starts to like nibble out a teeny little bit of weight. It's, it's like can be aggressive or can be very, very light. And you can see what that does is it takes out some of that weight, making this section look a lot skinnier. You can uh, do some more bold kind of tipping for more, you know, extreme weight removal and definition. So you can see we get some bolder sections of weight, bringing this hair together at points, giving you slight more definition. You could also uh, do some skimming or planing or using the flat of the blade to take out weight at the same time all the way across the section. And you could do that fast or slow. Like this would be my, like probably my like regular normal speed of doing it. You can see just slowly skimming out that weight until it disappears. So that's pretty fun, right? Pretty fun. Right? Pretty fun. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Anyway, we're gonna take this out. I get too excited. And then we're gonna use a guide from the back here. That's why we have that increased length in the corner because it was back here. I'm bringing it now to the side. I'm gonna use that as a guide. Maybe we'll come up over the top for this. And then I'm going to start cutting this still in a bit of a square way with a very open blade. I wanna make sure that I'm not getting too long. I don't want this to become a bob. You see, I think this is still a little too long. Like it curves over too much. It feels like a bob. So uh, what we'll do is take it a little shorter, coming up like this. And then I'm using 
a long, long, long movement of the blade to get a lot of softness in there on the side. That's much better. Bringing this kind of flat out. I don't want to drop it too low because again, I don't want it to look um, too heavy, too bobbish. I want to feel like it's pixie. And I'm just working this around just like that. We got one little extra long one there. You can see that it starts to connect nicely into the side, visually kind of blends together, melts together there. We'll probably only have a couple of sections of this. So you're just gonna keep working until you've run out of hair that reaches. You could work to the very center, or you could work your way across. You could even start it in the front now that you have your guide established, because you're kind of cutting a, like a even square shape. So do you work it either direction. Pulling that out. If you wanna take out more weight, we could plane that in just a teeny bit right through there. And comb that in to see, are we getting a nice blended, connected feeling. Maybe just a little extra weight removal here in the front. Cool, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Ooh, look out. And then we'll show one other way to connect in the top and the bangs or the fringe. <laughs> Whichever one, what do you guys call it? Bangs or fringe, quick quiz, bangs or fringe, go. So here's our guide again from the back. We got our guide. We're gonna bring this up. On this side, the only difference is my razor's now gonna point up towards the ceiling because I'm working in this direction using long motions to make sure this is very, very soft. I wanna make sure this gets really blurry, really soft, a lot of fun texture. No one took the quiz. No one's taking the quiz. Oh, there's one. Fringe. Fringe, we got one for ah, fringe. And a bangs. We got a bangs, we got an even race. Oh, two bangs now. Two bangs, for, two for bangs. Oh, bangs are up. Oh, fringe has pulled back to fringe its high. Oh, and fringe is up. Two oh fringes goodness. more. We got two more fringes. Oh, and a fringy and a fringe fascio. Ooh, Ooh, bangs are back. Bangs are back. Bangs are back in style, everybody. <laughs> oh, wow. That was... What an incredible thing. What I a rush. We're, we're still about even. I'm totally digging it, though. You can see we've got our nice connected in feeling through the sides now. Here's our uh, diagonal forward side, I believe. And then we've got that kind of softness. You can see it naturally wants to push forward in a very soft way towards the face. We've got our nice mullety fringiness through there. And now what we're gonna do, again, to give just these old, these old gams of mine, <laughs> these stems on my arms, a break. We're gonna have Ben come back in and show us one way to connect in the fringe and to layer through the top. Your razor's over there. Everyone's very particular about what they want to use. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the same way. Like, I want to use this comb a lot of the time, right? Yeah. Ben wants to use this comb. Black. It's bigger. This one's green and it's smaller. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so yeah, you can see right. we've got a pixie. It's, it's there. Yeah, the, you, you could stop right now, really, if you didn't have these pieces. <laughs> you could stop and call that, and uh, that, that's good. What, what we have been seeing a bunch of are these kind of little curtain fringes on, on the short hair pixie thing, you know? Everybody's yeah. been doing that a whole bunch, and we do it a whole bunch, too. Um, the way that we kind of like start with that is, is find a little triangle section through the front, I like to find where the front hair lives, the, the fringe section. I think fringe is what we maybe all settled on. We had a lot more fringes than Did bangs. we? Was it? it yeah. So fringe won that debate. Okay. I think it did. I think it did. I think you sound more cool or something like that when you say that. You sound more... Uh, Official. Yeah. So I'm going to split this in half and I'm going to find a length for my fringe by taking a little horizontal right there. And I'm going to work myself from the center out. I'm going to use the back part of the blade so that I am not giving her a free nose job because she did not pay for that. Yeah, we're going to have to charge more for that. Yeah, if you're cutting with the top of the blade, then you're going to be bon bonking into her nose right here with the back part, and that is no good. So we want to think about that. Use the bottom part of the blade so that you're ah. exposing less of it to the hair or to the skin and everything. And you're working that sh in a short to long way little diagonal down short to long. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. We have a question here. Let's hear What's it. the best way to introduce a client to a razor if they have had a bad experience with one in the past? I think that's a great question. We've all had people say, ooh, don't touch that razor to me, you monster. I had a bad experience 
like uh, most Jeff says in Fast and the Furious or something like that, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I think it's with dogs. Uh, but anyway, he's scared of dogs. In that oh, movie. you know what it is? It's, um, it's um, Ocean's Eleven. Oh, there you go. Well, good. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah. Dogs <laughs> are not, nice for know. the most part. Um, and razors are great, too. Uh, I think the thing is, um, you are the the thing that we usually get into is we will say, you know, you may have had a bad experience with the razor cut in the past, but it is not necessarily the razor's fault. It's mostly the, that's very true the user's fault. They like we we mentioned earlier, you can do a lot of bad stuff with the razor. You can really break the hair off by scraping it like this and stuff like that. People sometimes will just be whacking it through there, making a big Ooh. mess. You can make a big mess with the razor for sure. And the, the way that I kind of drive that home usually is you can think back to some time when you had a bad haircut with scissors also, most likely. Very true, you, you could. Don't, you don't blame the scissors. It was just the person that was wielding them. That's, it's, that's the problem. So I think that if you can use the razor in a, a competent way where you understand what it's doing uh, and you are not exploiting it, it really can help you a lot. And it can give you a very beautiful, healthy, soft result that will not leave any damage in your hair so it says we love whacking it through yeah you can whack it and that is fun but sometimes that does not leave the hair in the best shape Ooh, so we're already starting to get the shape so you guys we have like a little bit of a v shape there or a and it should push out kind of really shape, nicely yeah. a little pyramid if, if you find that it's not you can also come in on the back side you can do a diagonal back this way you can scoot yourself over to here bring it the opposite way and you can use the tip of the blade, as Jake did a minute ago, and just kind of soften out just a little bit of weight through the underneath, because when this hair sits, that is going to be underneath. So all of the texture will live on the underneath, and the top will still look smooth. If you come through like this and do it, that also works, but you will be leaving these little short bits on the top. So sometimes that may not be what you want you can hide it so if you think about what hair is going to live on the top you can come on the opposite side of it and do it on the underneath so that you will be doing maybe ghost layers is that you think that's what that means i'm not sure you hide it's called ghost texture we just invisible coin that phrase right now you ghost. see that fringe coming in really beautifully ghost texture oh look and she has some real eyelashes Ooh, Anybody seen that on, on, on a mannequin lady? Blink, blink, blink. These are too long. I'm going to shorten them. Yeah, I also, we love using a razor on all sorts of different textures. There's just, you know, different things you have to think about as far as, like, you know, what, how much weight are you taking out? How much pressure are you using? How, what, what sort of dramatic difference um, of, like, short to long links are you creating? Certain textures that may not be the best. Others, it's great. So you can use a razor on everybody. You just have to really think about what you're doing and why. Yes, and there are maybe some techniques of using the razor that are not appropriate on every type of head, but I think the razor as a tool, you can find some use for it if you really want to, but sometimes it's not the smartest or fastest. Like the reason why you were using it earlier, and we were saying because it makes it easier than doing the same result with the scissor, you can get a very similar result with the scissor, but it's harder and it takes longer. So our, our whole goal, the reason why we pick it is on, on a time when it would be sensible and just make our job easier. So that's the main, main thing we're trying to land here. And a lot of time for these soft, short pixie looks, especially on a texture like this, the razor's the way to go. That's the way we feel. So I'm just continuing on with these kind of vertical sections and bringing them all the way forward just to just blend the top part of the, uh, the all the way back to the crown. And I'm just kind of, again, just kind of using the flat of the blades to sort of plane off a little bit of that extra weight to make that lay in. And you see this real cool, fringy bit. I mean, look at the fun shape. We get all of this concave mullity action. We get this disconnected kind of vibe here in the side. We get some soft little corners and we get a kind of curtainy vibe fringe, which is just so cool. I mean, I really love the profile of it. It's so beautiful as well. So we're looking good. I think um, we can maybe, I'll go over a little bit of if you wanted to come in and detail a teeny bit with a scissor. Because we Ooh, get, great see, idea. like some, someone says, razoring dry hair means they cut, oh yeah, they, I think you're right, you're sort of right. We don't really like to use a razor on dry hair. A lot of people do and get cool results with it, but I think you just really need to know exactly what you're doing. We prefer damp to wet hair is best. I love this shape, it's really, really fun. It kind of also reminds me of another person who you may have seen on Hairbrain named Brianna. She is a friend of ours and has a very iconic look. 
very similar, I think, to this fringiness right here. Without the mullet. Without the mullet. But then um, here, we'll show you. Let's say that you're kind of new to using the razor a little bit and you're worried that you've put in some split ends. So all we have to do is you can come back over it with a scissor and look for like, let's see, is there anything that's like a little too skinny? Like, is that a little too skinny maybe? That we can come in and just tighten that up just a little bit, you know? It doesn't have to be all that much. We're not trying to change the shape of anything. We're literally just coming back, doing that last bit of detail work to clean that up. And I think, um, you know, a friend of ours, another sort of a friend, a mentor even of ours, named Nikki, Nikki Rojos, <laughs> he would say the same thing, that you could come in, and I think that's probably the first person I heard ever say that, to do that. So we just come back over it, with a, when you're using the razor in a very open way, and you could say, oh, maybe we'll just, you know, nip a teeny little bit of that weight out, or I'm sorry, of those ends off, just like that, to make sure that it's nice and sealed in and looking very, very healthy. Ooh, how would you dry this? Oh, we can show you, let's show you right now. So a lot of time I think what is cool to do, what we like to do when the hair is short, is either sort of diffuse it in, like let it air dry, diffused kind of feeling, or you can um, use your hands in a blow dryer. But the idea really is that we don't want there to be too many tools involved. Like the whole thing about effortless hair. Short hair is supposed to be easy. Yeah, you say effortless real life hair. Sorry, my cord is stuck here. We're gonna come just a little further this way. Effortless real life hair is kind of what we're trying to teach. So what does that mean to us? It means that like, it needs to be effortless in real life. It can't just appear effortless in the image and in the video you make for social media. Your clients gotta be able to do it at home. So big thing with that is that we don't wanna to use too many brushes on short hair. We want this to kind of just melt in really, really nicely and easily. Um, and we'll show a couple different products we can play with afterwards as well. So I'm gonna use my hands and a blow dryer. We're going to kind of flat wrap it. So I'm just pushing it in the direction that I want it to go. Kind of side to side, push it one way. Pulling with my fingers. Yell over the dryer. If your client is there, get them to keep talking. Say, what about your kids? <laughs> what about Johnny's game? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Expelled from school, you say. <laughs> Interesting. And then you'll do the same thing. It's like you kind of just kind of push it all forward through the front. You want it to be just get it to flatten out a little bit, especially on a doll. It's like you want it to flatten out just a little bit. Flat wrap it. Flat wrap in. Didn't get into any of the colleges that she applied for? <laughs> Man. <laughs> what are we talk what are we, what are we talking about with clients now? Like talk about all the stuff you don't want to talk about with them when you're blow drying is what you should do. So you're like, did you get the shot? Did you get it? <laughs> I might. Soon. I'm not on the list. So keep on blow drying that down. Blow dry it down. Just literally, I'm just using just my fingers. I mean, that's like, I want to give the client the idea that it's going to be easy to do. Like, if I have like a, a three different brushes, six different tools, I wet it, I diffuse it, I wet it, I rediffuse it, I wet it, I rediffuse it again, or whatever, it's going to take too long and it's too hard. I just want it to be easy. So I'm just like, push it around, use my fingers. So when I push it one way and down, then push it the other way and down. Then we're going to blow dry the other back a little. <laughs> And you go one for you, one for me, one for you, and one for me. And that gets them, that makes them feel like you're really sort of like whimsical, and it's great. And then you blow it right out. But very serious on a serious note. <laughs> Just push it around, you know? The razor makes it really soft, makes it easy to style. So then once we kind of have it there, I'm gonna turn the blow dryer down a little bit. I'm literally just going to kind of piece this in with my fingers. I'm going to come in and I'm going to give it a little bend with the dryer, just like that. That way we can have these corners kind of like 
kick out, pop up just a little bit. Not too much effort, really. I'm trying to make sure you can see it at the same time. So essentially, like I'm gonna come on the back end of it, and put a little bend in it, and then right away we get this like flippier, you know, feeling in the fringe. Yeah. That's nice. And we can piece it out. You see, I'm just doing it with just my fingers. Just like bending it and then heat it up. But the blow dryer's on low airflow and low heat right now. That's real easy. They see you do that. You know what I hate that a client will say? A client will say, oh, I'll never make it look like that at home. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that means that I failed you. I failed you because I want it to be able to look good. You know, it's like, this is often said too. It's a billboard, like this is a billboard for your work. Like however they're styling at home, like people are gonna come up and say, who did your hair? They're either gonna say it like this. They're gonna say, ooh, who does your hair? Or they're gonna say, oh, who did your hair? <laughs> and then if you get that one, that's not a good thing because it's all about how they style it. And I always just pay the client putting in no effort, none at all is the amount of effort I anticipated client putting in. Is there any product in this hair right now? There's no product in this hair right now. How incredible is that? Not a single thing. But you could definitely enhance it if you wanted more shine. There's a few things we could use. What I like to do, well I guess I lied. There is this in it in advance. That's pretty cool, that little little kind of shine line action in the middle. Yeah, it gives you a cool shine line <laughs> from the base melt stopping. It's just an inch ba base melt. You uh, do it like an inch or two out, and then you stop at the occipital in the back. So you get like um, this revealed reverse shine line. I'd say it's shadow line. Yeah, there you go. Ooh, the shadow line. And then um, before cutting, I maybe we put a little bit of this carousel reconstruct spray in. It's gonna give you shine, gives you a little heat protection, gives you just a little slip, makes it easier to part. I always like to finish lately. I've been using the dust up like crazy, right? I use it. All you do is you season the hair with it. You're gonna salt it in, salt it in. How would you style this on curly hair? I probably would um, scrunch it into place, like with my fingers, scrunch it and just kind of place it and let it air dry. Or I would then come in with a diffuser just to enhance the speed of the air dry. But I mean, the idea really would be to keep it very, very natural and um, you know, not worry too much about forcing it, especially with curl. Like what, what, with my hair, what do I do with my hair today? I um, I got out of the shower, I scrunched it with an old t-shirt of a band that I used to listen to in high school, and then uh, I probably still listen to them now. And then what I did from there is I gave it a couple little twists, I sprayed in something called Surf Oil from Goldwell. Um, I don't know if I have one sitting out, but it's called Surf Oil. It's really, really super cool, kind of salt oil spray. I scrunch it again and then I diffuse it. But I keep it basically exactly how it's gonna be. So that's what I would do with this. I would scrunch it into place, add my product, re-scrunch, and then diffuse. And then that's like an awesome finish that you could get. You can see with just that little bit of a, uh, what's it called? <laughs> hair, hair powder. Then we get this nice bit of texture, lift and mm -hmm. separation. And yeah, you would use a diffuser with curly hair, maybe. Or, or, or with, I mean, it just yeah. depends on how long you have. Do you want it dry now, or do you want it to air dry and whatever? You know, diffuser, I, I have a tendency to get a little longer, or I'm sorry, a little bit more volume, a little bit more full. But with uh, air dry, things maybe are a little flatter. So it just depends on what, what you're going for. But, yeah, dude, that looks pretty good. So you guys, just to review, we've got multiple techniques on this head. We have concave shapes with vertical sections, just cutting from short down to long from the occipital down. Then on one side, we cut diagonal forwards. And you can see it gives us a little increased length. We've got a little kind of push forward by taking diagonal forward sections. We're naturally pushing the weight towards the face. On the other side, we wanted to show you how to push it off the face. Underneath the fringe on this side, we took diagonal back sections. So you can see it builds a little more and curves back a little bit more uh, in a very kind of nice and natural way. We took uh, horizontal sections here and here to blend the sides in and then we cut a curtain fringe on something short Which you know a lot of time we're cutting this on links that are very long But remember each part of this is a haircut you can use every single part 159 every single uh, what's it called? <laughs> day thing. every day as a uh, every technique to make your own look. <laughs> we got one more minute in this live So thank you guys so much for tuning in